I think one of the things that I look forward to on the tour most of all is that magic moment that occurs when, when it hits the kids. It could occur when they're, they're just standing in a cemetery. It could be when they're halfway through their eulogy. It could be when they're just standing in front of a, a name on a memorial that they have no idea what it is. And you suddenly see it, and everybody experiences that. It doesn't matter um, you know, how long they're on the tour for or what, what they do, it just happens to everybody. The eulogy for me for Timothy James Applin was actually really emotional. I wasn't expecting to be that emotional, but when I got there and I sat down and looked out onto, into Anzac Cove and it was really, really emotional for me. When I was reading the eulogy, I wasn't really feeling upset or anything, but then when I sat down, I was able to take it all in. I put his cross in the ground and put his photo and I just looked at his photo and realised that that was a dad and he, he had a wife, he had children and those children and his wife lost him. Commemorations were certainly one of my favourite parts of the tour but the, after the first commemoration I was just shocked. I think I had a few tears in my eyes that these soldiers um, had a story. Uh, the first one I remember was in the 7th Field Ambulance Cemetery and the fact that this one soldier that she was pointing to on the ground had a story and that there were hundreds of other around. I, would just, I was so excited to hear all their stories. And that's really why the tour is so important because it helps you on that journey to understand a little bit better. You get to know the fact that you know, these people that, are, that gave their lives for Australia are individuals. You know, there's a story behind them, but it's not just about them, it's about the families they left behind as well. Our very first commemoration um, when we were over there, none of us really knew what to expect. No one had actually presented one yet. We just had a brief from the historians about exactly what had happened there and why there was a cemetery here away from the battlefields and what that meant for the seventh ambulance. One of the two um, people was presenting their eulogy and it was kind of then that it really hit us that we were standing in a cemetery where people really were, there were people beneath our feet who'd been there for a hundred or so years and this person presenting in the middle of their eulogy in front of you know, 70 people, half of whom were close to tears. And we looked at her and she had a single tear running down her cheek and it was kind of the humanization of this individual, bringing him back to life after all this time. And his story hadn't actually been heard for however many decades, it could possibly even be the whole century since um, the events at Gallipoli. And it kind of hit us then that um, these were real people and they were there and they'd fought and they'd died. Some of the people buried in that cemetery had died on the first day of combat. That was it. They were there for a day and that was all. And it was then that we realised the, the humanity of what had happened there. Soldier research for me was a really important part of the tour because I had the chance to commemorate two of my family members together, one who served in World War I on the Western Front and was killed in trench fighting and another who served in World War II and was shot down over Berlin. That said though, I also had the opportunity to commemorate a soldier who fought in Afghanistan, Darren James Smith. And I think it's really important that we not only focus on remembering those who fought in Gallipoli and in World War I, but also in other conflicts because whilst our technology has changed and whilst our methods have changed, that Anzac spirit of mateship and sacrifice has really remained with our soldiers to this day. My great great uncle was buried in the Warland Court British Cemetery and I'm the first person from my family to be able to go and see his grave. And one thing that she has spoken about a lot was reading the headstones and standing there and she read a headstone of a soldier who was young and had two children and and she actually texted me at three o'clock in the morning after that experience and said you know these these people are fathers and they've left behind children and so in that way I think war was made very real to Ainsley. But it was just a great aspect of tour just to hear all the stories, they're just normal people like us, um, some of them 16, 17, which is most of our ages on tour, that was daunting as well, to know that these soldiers um, made the same trip that we did in completely different context, um, a century apart. But One of the key themes that emerged from the filming and the interviewing that I had done for me 
was how all the nations had also made such an incredible sacrifice. And that was really brought home to us through many of the things that we did on the tour at the Cape Hells Memorial and the Shinakali Martyrs Memorial, where we saw not only just rows and rows of Turkish gravestones, but also had the knowledge that there were six soldiers carved on each of those gravestones. It wasn't just Australia who lost so many of its, uh, of its sons and of its fathers, but also other nations. And that's the important thing, you know, these stories are forgotten. And it's not until people stop and start doing the research and sharing these stories that you actually bring that person back to life, that their story is retold, a story that may have been forgotten. And I think there's nothing more special than a student going and standing in front of the, the grave or the memorial of their relative and being able to share that story. And in many cases, they're the first people of their family ever to go back and visit those particular graves or memorials. And there's nothing more special than that.